The views expressed in this podcast are not to be taken as either trading nor financial advice. Neither the announcer nor the Sears report make any claims to be certified financial advisors, and all reporting is dedicated solely towards being both informative and educational. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Sears Report Market Wrap-Up for Friday, October 11th, 2024. Well, it's been a big week when it comes to inflation, so no matter what the Fed did, of course, they are on the wrong side of history. But we're going to take a look at what the University of Michigan sentiment reports, how the markets continue to soar, especially equities, all-time highs, and what we have in store in the banks as we really come to the end of the Fed repo market. So, or I should say, reverse repo market. So with this in mind, let's go ahead and jump right in and see how the markets fared. Taking a look at the Dow, the Dow was up 409 points, uh, as were all of the primary stock markets. Dow was up 409 to close out at 42,863, while the SP 500 was at 3498, closing out at 5815, and the NASDAQ with a new high, up 60 points to 18,342. In the bond markets, well, the bond yields are not showing or acting as if inflation was kicking in. The 10 year, though, is just below 4.1% at 4.1 or 4.096, and the two year is at 3.953. So we have back to about 15 basis point difference in regards to the two and the 10 year. In the dollar markets, well, the dollar ended the week down a little bit after getting up to the 103 handle twice, bouncing below it. It would close the day down seven cents against a basket of uh, Western currencies to close out the week at 102.92. Meanwhile, after getting dunked on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, gold and silver did have a little bit of a recovery. Silver was up 39 cents, closing out the week at $31.61 while gold was up 26.80, closing out at 26.57. In the crypto markets, both Bitcoin and Ethereum had good days, with Bitcoin in the last 24 hours of trading up 4.63% to cross back over the 63,000 handle, and Ethereum was up 3.13% to close at 24.58. In the oil markets, well, we opened the day, especially when the PPI inflation numbers came out. Both WTI and Brent were in the green, but closed the day in the red. WTI was down 29 cents, closing out the week at 75.56, while Brent crude was down 54 cents to 78.86. Well, this, as I mentioned, core producer price inflation hotter than expected. Same with consumer price inflation earlier this week. After yesterday's hotter than expected CPI, all eyes were on this morning's PPI print for dovish hopes that the blip in CPI is transitory. Of course, there is the baffle with BS print as well, as data shows the month over month, month, over month print cooled more than expected, but the year over year was hotter than expected. Headline PPI was unchanged month over month, but it was up 1.8% year over year, hotter than the 1.6% uh, expected. So the Fed hoping that they had licked the dragon of inflation, it didn't quite happen. So they cut the rates, despite the fact that uh, jobs, the job numbers, how much we can trust, were, trust them, were up as well which should escalate inflation even greater. And we're seeing this in the, in the uh, bond markets. And we are also seeing in the mortgage markets where we had a spike on Tuesday of nearly or a little more than half a percent heading towards a 1% jump in a single day. In the University of Michigan sentiment report, it slipped in October as inflation expectations rebound. Medium-term inflation expectations picked up uh, in preliminary University of Michigan sentiment data for October with the five to 10 now year at now at 2.9%. The anxiety weighed on the overall sentiment survey as it declined from 70.1 to 68.9, much lower than expectations. Both current conditions and expectations fell on the month. 
The uh, oddly, while inflation expectations have softened in recent months, concerns about higher prices remain extremely elevated, which in itself is an oxymoron because higher prices mean that we have inflation. Well, one thing that's really interesting is, is the Fed has pretty much run out of or gets to the bottom of its reverse repo money that's been holding the bank steady for the last two to three years. A lot of money has been going into money markets, primarily where we see the inflows go for purchases in the stock markets, but we're also seeing uh, a lot of deposits go into the banks. And with the banks holding more capital or attempting to, to make up for their liabilities, it appears at this point in time, they might not be able to rely upon the Fed except through the Fed fund, uh, Fed uh, discount window, which we know is still over 5% to borrow. And they don't want to do it this time. So they are pretty much seeing a leveraging of getting out of the markets while still remaining in the markets, but holding onto more capital because they can no longer do the overnight treasury trade that was the reverse repo markets. Well, if there's any more indication that uh, cities are in trouble, we already have New York that is looking to close a number of schools and now San Francisco is joining the mix. San Francisco to shutter 9% of public schools as their budget crisis explodes. Now, I'm not gonna get too much into the details here, but where did that massive uh, budget crisis come from? Well, it came from two things commercial real estate falling off a cliff and driving out companies, especially the X, the Twitter, and the Elon Musk companies. California has been hemorrhaging businesses in San Francisco more than anyone as we see the uh, fiscal choices that San Francisco has made and are now finally coming back to roost. Finally, the last thing we're gonna to touch upon before we go into the weekend, Boeing slashes 10% of its workforce, despite the fact that there were labor negotiations in tow at the time. In what some have called a panic desperation negotiation tactic, Boeing has announced that it will slash its workforce by 10% as the pummeled plane maker struggles with cash crunch and drawn out strike. In a memo to employees, CEO Kelly Ortberg noted that the reductions will include executives, managers, and employees warning that our business is in a difficult position and it's hard to overstate the challenges we face together. And one of those challenges is actually building something that doesn't blow up, fall apart, or is uh, worth the cost that their contracts with the government are providing. Because as we know, uh, Elon Musk had to send up a SpaceX aircraft to go ahead and try to get the stranded uh, astronauts and those had originally gone up on a Boeing aircraft or spacecraft and Boeing was not able to fix it in the time determinant between then and now. And so are they going to be uh, getting these same contracts that they did before from the government when you already have another company that it does it cheaper and much more efficiently? Anyway, uh, something to look for tomorrow. Paul and I will be doing a uh, podcast on financial we're gonna dedicate and focus on what the economy will look like no matter who is elected into the presidency in November. So uh, look forward to that. And other than that, we wanna thank everybody for being a part of this community. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, uh, let anybody know if you think this is important. And until the next time we get together, have a great weekend.